So, I'm not really a fan of marble countertops. Let's just get that out of the way right at the beginning. I've always viewed them as the countertop choice for those that like to look at their kitchens more than actually work in them. But am I wrong? <laughs> Back to the channel everybody and honestly I wasn't looking forward to making this video at all and I was actually gonna skip it entirely but I figured you know what in fairness and in the fact that you know roughly 10% of people seem to be in that marble direction or leaning towards marble I figured I might as well make it I'll make an unbiased form of it and really round out all of the natural stone options or at least the popular natural stone options of this series so without further ado, let's jump into that discussion about marble. Pretty well, anything and everything you could possibly want to know. Let's get into the stone itself first. Marble is a metamorphic rock. It results from metamorphism of sedimentary or carbonate rocks under extreme heat and pressure. These rocks are most commonly limestone and dolomite. The resulting marble rock is usually composed of an interlocking mosaic of carbonate crystals. This crystalline structure is actually what allows marble to take a polish, or any of the natural stones to take a polish for that matter. Pure white forms are generated from nearly pure limestone with little silicate minerals, whereas those with veining or swirls or slightly colored are due to mineral impurities such as clay, silt, and sand. That greeny color we often see in marble sometimes is from serpentine. So where is marble found? Well, most people automatically assume Italy when they first think of marble. After all, people think of those gorgeous buildings and sculptures in Italy, and names like Michelangelo and Julius Caesar, those that created them. However, marble can be found all over the world, including some states in the US, like Vermont, Colorado, Alabama, Georgia. The more common places though are Italy, Greece, India, and China. However, what I found really interesting as I dove in and did a little bit of research is that in 2018, Turkey, of all places, was actually the global leader when it came to exporting marble. They accounted for roughly 42% of the market share. The largest importer, on the other hand, and by a landslide, was China, who accounted for 65% of all global marble imports. Anyways, sorry for the tangent, those are just some crazy stats that I came across while doing research for this video. The point being that marble is found pretty much anywhere, and like many of the other natural stones, each different region is going to lead to slightly different characteristics. The real big question though is, is marble durable? And this has really been that big knock against marble for years and years, is that it just doesn't hold up in everyday life, everyday situations, the wear and tear we put our kitchens through. When we compare it to everything else we've already discussed, the answer is pretty simple. No, it isn't as durable. But that's not always the reason people go down the marble route in the first place, as we will talk about later on. On the trusty Moz scale, marble sits at roughly a 2 to 3, right around soapstone, and well below that of granite, which sits roughly around 6.5 or engineered quartz and quartzite at 7. This also means it's not resistant to scratching, it can nick and chip, and is susceptible to etching. But more on that later. So at this point, you're probably sitting there thinking, why on earth would anybody want marble as a kitchen countertop in their homes? And you know, I find myself thinking the same thing quite often. But marble does have a few things going for it. Marble is beautiful, period. They add a certain elegance and pizzazz to any kitchen. They're kind of like the supermodel of countertops when it comes to beauty. It's also a great place to throw in our usual point about stone countertops, in that every slab is unique. So if you're after that one-of-a-kind feel that you can't find anywhere else, well, marble should be on your short list. Marble is actually a rather ubiquitous material that's found in quite a few places throughout the world, making it, in some regards, cheaper than some other natural stone options. For example, Carrera Marble, a grayer version from Carrera, Italy, is one of the least expensive options because it is readily available. However, a rarer form like Calicutta, with its whiter finish and more dramatic veining, will drive that price tag up quickly. Marble can, with a big old asterisk, last a lifetime. Most of us want to just jump in and use our kitchens. We don't want to stare at them like some sort of showpiece. We don't want to worry or be finicky about what sort of things can go on our countertop, any spill here and there. However, under the right conditions with regular maintenance, regular upkeep, marble countertops can be very long lasting. And finally, some will claim that marble will add value to your home. 
Now, I'm not entirely sold on this particular talking point or selling feature, and it is definitely something I'm gonna be bringing up with our guests that we have coming in a few weeks' time. However, some claim because that perceived additional cost that goes into using marble within a kitchen, it will increase your home's value. Again, I'm not so sold. Now, let's take a look at those downsides, those negatives, and all those reasons why some people will tell you never to put marble in your kitchens. Now, I say some people because there are other designers and other people out there that love using marble and they have their reasons. But here are the typical downsides to marble countertops. Marble is porous. So, pretty well every other natural stone we talked about is too. However, not quite like marble. It's like marble countertops have eyes. And as soon as they see a bottle of red wine taken out, they just start turning pink. Okay, well that's a bit of an exaggeration, but marble does stain very easily. But spills can seep down into the stone and become stains. Now there are ways to clear it up. For example, the Marble Institute recommends a solution of 12% hydrogen peroxide with a few drops of ammonia to clear up any simple stains. Or you could take another approach and just ban all non-clear substances from your kitchen. Oh, and acids, vinegars, all that sort of stuff while you're at it as well. And while we're talking about acidic substances, marble can etch and etch really easily. Heck, I've seen hard water etch a marble countertop in areas where the sealer had faded or was no longer as functional as when it was first applied. After saying all of that, and in the name of talking about this in an unbiased manner, you can solve some of those problems. For example, you can hone your marble surface, which will hide some of the etching and hide some of those scratches and marks. It's not necessarily gonna hide all the stains, but it will make them less noticeable than say its polished form. You can even use steel wool to buff out some of those harder scratches. So there definitely is options for looking after your countertops after they've had a little bit of wear and tear. As I mentioned when we discussed durability, marble is definitely on the softer side, not the most durable countertop surface, and it is prone to nicks, chips, and scratches, and it can even crack if something heavy is dropped in the right spot. Now, just like soapstone, marble will also develop somewhat of a patina, or a character of its own over time. Now, also like soapstone, I'm gonna stick this under the cons because you really have no idea what that patina is going to look like. It may look great in one kitchen, and well, not so attractive in another. My guess though is after getting sick of all the regular upkeep and maintenance, you're gonna resign to the fact that you're just gonna let them age and develop that patina over time. And lastly, they are most definitely not maintenance free, they aren't even low maintenance. But let's dig a little more into this now. So you just had your marble countertops installed, what's next? Well the very first step is to apply a good penetrating sealer. Your marble countertops do not come sealed no matter how they are finished. And this is something you're gonna to wanna to do right from the start. Marble is typically found in two main finishes, polished for a high gloss look or honed. That honed option is better at hiding, etching and scratches or nicks, but it does leave your countertops more vulnerable to staining. And interestingly enough, about 90% of the countertops or the marble countertops installed fall under that honed category. Under normal use, you can probably expect somewhere around a year for that sealer to hold up. And just like other stone countertops, the water test will tell you when it's time to reseal. Now what about daily care or daily maintenance? Well, the first thing is wipe up spills immediately. Any splashes from acidic foods or drinks like citrus fruits or coffee or red wine or vinegar should all be wiped up immediately because even a sealed countertop can still etch. Use a mild soap, anything that you would use on your hands and a non-abrasive cloth or sponge to wipe down your countertops. The goal here is not to necessarily clean them thoroughly, but to catch any spills or splashes before they have a chance to soak in and stain. So after all that, well, you've done your best, but you still wound up with some staining, some etching, some scratches. What now? Well, mild soap and mild approaches will no longer work here. Your best approach here is gonna be using some sort of marble polishing powder or cleanser along with an abrasive brush. This will allow you to remove the penetrating sealer and really start to work on that stain. However, you'll also notice that once you've done this, if you do get the stain out, that area of your countertops is probably gonna be whiter than the rest. Meaning in order to give everything that uniform look, you will have to do the rest of your countertops as well. If it's a real stubborn stain, it's time to bring in the big guns, hire the professionals, those with the proper tools and know-how, who will likely start grinding or sanding down the stone to try and get that stain out. 
ultimately you are more likely to just let your countertop age, let those stains, those spills, any of that etching develop that patina and become a character or a story within your kitchen. Now what about environmental impact of marble countertops? And first of all, thank you to all of you who left comments on the last video or participated in our poll. It's really great to see that a lot of you take eco-friendly materials or environmental impact as one of the decision-making factors when you are purchasing products during your renovations. Similar to other natural stones, it seems like the very definition of sustainable. Marble comes from the earth, it is rather abundant, and can be extracted all over the world. But this comes with a pretty giant asterisk. Quarrying and fabrication lead to extensive waste. Sometimes as high as 70% of material goes to waste. In addition, it guzzles water and massive amounts of energy to process this stone. Thankfully, a lot of this excess waste is starting to make its way into hands of artists or designers who are finding creative ways to use those smaller pieces. Finally, although it is found all over the world, most of what we use in renovations here in North America comes from far-flung places like Italy, China, India, and Turkey, leaving behind a massive fuel bill and carbon footprint to get it over here. Now, if you still are considering marble and are interested in minimizing your environmental footprint, think of something more local or take the extra time to source something more local, like Danby Marble out of Vermont. Once again, only you can decide if marble countertops are right for you in your kitchen. And I'd be lying if I said that part of me doesn't love the idea of an old world stone countertop taking on a life and character of its own as it changes its texture and color with use over time. But alas, Practicality wins in, and it's just not right for me at this point in our lives. That's it for this exciting episode. Thanks a ton for watching, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in the next one.